Hey everybody, I got a quick video here for you today. And before I start, I just want to mention that my last video I took down, I got a very good message. Uh, that wasn't critical of me, but just saying, hey, you might want to check something out. And uh, after going over, <laughs> after going over that video I made four years ago, about the third or fourth time and kind of scratching my head, I realized an initial mistake. So I didn't feel comfortable with all the information on that video, but I still thought it was a cool video with those stone circles found under the Aegean Sea by Robert Ballard. And I will always be honest with my subscribers and I will always admit if I screw up and make a mistake and I've made almost a thousand history videos now. So I just didn't feel comfortable with all the information on that video, but I'm glad a lot of you watched it. But the Horus and Jesus thing, this is a well-debated topic on some of my videos, so I just thought I would read from Gerald Massey's Egyptian Book of the Dead and Mysteries of Amenta, and this comes from the year, I believe, 1900. And I'm just going to read a little of what he uh, writes in this book, and then I'll just leave it wide open for my subscribers and viewers to comment if they choose to. But the where the Jesus story comes from, do I think the Jesus story is 100% factual? No. Do I think it's 100% fiction? No. Nope. And I've stated those on some of my videos. But here is what Gerald Massey uh, writes. And first, there is a poem, and I believe this comes from the Papyrus of Nebseni, which is included in the Book of the Dead or the Book of Coming Forth by Day. And I think it is chapter 173, if I'm not mistaken. But let me just read this poem about Horus. Horus the Savior, who was brought to birth as light in heaven and sustenance on earth, Horus in spirit, verily divine, who came to turn the water into wine, Horus who gave his life and sowed the seed for men to make the bread of life indeed, Horus the Comforter, who did descend in human fashion as the heavenly friend horus the word the founder in his youth horus fulfiller as the word made truth horus the lord and leader in the fight against the dark powers of the ancient night horus the sufferer with his cross bowed down who rose at easter with his double crown horus the pioneer who paved the way of resurrection to eternal day Horus triumphant, with the battle done, Lord of two worlds, united and made one. Now let me just jump ahead a little bit here. It says, It is a common Christian belief continually iterated that life and immortality were brought to light, and death, the last enemy, was destroyed by a personal Jesus only 19 centuries ago, whereas the same revelation had been accredited to Horus the Anointed, and to the Isu, the coming sun, for thousands of years before, with Horus or the Isu as the personal and ideal revealer who was the Messiah in the astronomical mythology and the Son of God in the eschatology. The doctrine of immortality is so ancient in Egypt that the book of vivifying the soul forever, said over a figure of enlightened dead, was not only extant some 6,000 years ago in the time of Husepti, fifth king of the first dynasty, it was then so old that the true tradition of interpretation was at that time already lost. Now jumping further ahead, it says this, The Incarnation, which is looked upon as a central mystery of the Christian cult, had no origin and can have no adequate or proper explanation in Christianity. Its real origin, like those of other Egyptian dogmas and, doct and doctrines, was purely natural. It was prehistorical and non-personal, and as the mystery of Horus and his virgin mother, who were equally prehistorical and non-historical, it had been the central mystery of the Egyptian faith for ages, utilized by the ancient teachers for all it was or could be worth, and was continued by the teachers of historic Christianity in ignorance of its origin and only true significance, or with criminally culpable suppression of the Gnosis, by which alone the inexplicable latter-day mysteries could have been explained. And that comes from the Egyptian Book of the Dead and Mysteries of Amenta by Gerald Massey, written in the year 1900. 
I hope you thought that was interesting. Go ahead and leave your comments. I just thought that was uh, worth reading. You all have a very nice day.